How big is your dependency injection configuration file? Your program.cs, your startup.cs. If it's too big, here it goes away to break it down. You may have a project like this where in your API, in your entry point of your application, you have either on a program.cs or in a startup.cs, a lot of code doing registration of multiple things. For example, database connections, services, repositories, all the things go into here. And when this application starts growing, obviously this file can start to be really massive. And you don't want that. You want to keep this file maintainable as the rest of the code. I know that some people say that the entry point and dependency configuration is the dirtiest place in your application. But even then, we can do a good job of keeping things in shape to understand what is there, where things should go, and how to keep it working. On this example, I just have a few lines, but you get the point. This can start growing and eventually will become a problem to me. So what can we do instead to review this thing, to reorganize this thing? I have been seeing a lot of approaches to organize this thing, moving this into private methods inside of this file, using assembly scanning to automatically register dependencies. And by the way, if you are interested in the assembly scanning approach, Take a look into Scrooter. It's an amazing open source project. I have used it in the past with a lot of success, but nowadays I have to confess that I don't like the approach of assembly scanning. Why? Because I like to be really explicit with the dependencies that I bring into my source code. I don't want to take the risk of in a pull request, not realizing that I'm registering too many things into dependency injection, that I register things in duplicate, all those kind of nasty things that magic can bring into your uh, dependency injection registration. So how do I do it nowadays? Let's look into these few registrations that I have here. And I will try to group them, okay? For example, I have here something regarding Postgres, and I will move everything regarding Postgres to the nearby. This add book review is basically a feature that I have, kind of a service, so it's grouped with this add book read, and I have this one regarding Kafka. So three things, let's say. This one, the Postgres, and this one for Kafka are adapters to my application. Those two are in my core application. And now let's start organizing. So the approach that I like to do this thing is using extension methods. And let's start by these two features. So the first thing that we'll be doing is going into our core application, adding a new class, dependency injection extensions. It's a static class, and I will add an extension method here. The way that I like to do it is not add an extension method that will register every single thing from this project. I like to split it in features. I know that there's a convention on .NET, for example, if you go again to the program.cs, you will see that it's common to do this thing, for example, add controllers. So we group similar things together. For example, add endpoints, add swagger, add something. So we are grouping the same type of things. So if you translate that into your code, maybe we would be doing something like add repositories or add services. But I don't like that approach. I prefer a feature-driven approach. So in this case, I will name it as add feature, add book read. So it's one of my features. And I do hear the registration for that feature. On this case, it's only a simple service. But let's do the same for the other feature. As you can see, it's the same idea, just a different name and a different set of things that I'm registering. Now let's go back to our program CS. Just remove this from here. I don't need it anymore. And this time, let's register using the new approach. So now it's builder.services.addFeature, addBookRead, but also addFeature, addBookReview. It's more explicit. I know that I didn't save a lot of code on this approach, but we'll see it paying off in another one. Let's do the same for Postgres. Once again, add the dependency injection extensions class. It's a static one. And here, as you can see, I also have two stores. So I will follow the same idea. I will split this adapter into different features. So this is my first extension method, and I will have one for the other feature as well. So if we go to our program.cs and we bring these two lines into there, one goes through here, other on the top, and now this time let's call it service collection and it's done. So it's registered those two things. But now there's one that is missing. That is this one for the database connection. Let's copy it as well into there and apply it to the other one as well. Because one of the main ideas of splitting by feature is that one day only one of these features may move to a different technology 
and I keep using the other one. But this may bring a problem because now I'm registering twice the database connection. That's not what, uh, what I want. So what I can do instead on this type of scenarios is using something like that is the try add. You can use try add for the different life scopes of the dependency. So let's do that here and here. And what the try add will be doing is that it will try to add this dependency if it's not there yet. If it's already registered, it will keep going and ignore this step. Obviously, I can move those two lines, this one and this one, into a method. You get the drill. So it's just to explain to you that I can do that. So as you can see, now I'm isolating inside of this extension method all the logic required to install to all the adapter for Postgres regarding this feature. So let's go back to our program.cs and let's register it. Add Postgres store, add Postgres book review store. Now there's this one for Kafka missing, but you get the drill, it's the same idea. One of the big advantages of this approach is that it becomes really clear, as you can see what I'm installing, but there's one slightly different that you can do to reorganize this thing that I also really like, that is, for example, you can copy this, paste it, and now let's just group things by feature. For example, I can do this add book read here on the top, so I remove everything regarding the review, and on this one, let's do the other way around. And now, as you can see, I have here everything regarding the read and everything regarding the review together in two different groups it becomes really clear what I'm doing. Besides that, if eventually regarding book reviews, I decide to swap Postgres for DynamoDB, let's say, I could just come here and say, add DynamoDB that would expose his extension method as well. And I will remove this thing and it will keep working. Or I can use a feature flag and just call one extension method in one scenario and the other one in the other one. As you can see, it's a simple approach. It's using the existing conventions already on .NET. You see it everywhere with, for example, add controllers is an extension method as well. But I like to group them by adapter, for example, by feature, because it brings value to the way that you structure your code and put you in the right direction. There's only one open question now. Where should we invoke those methods? And the good news is that you can find the answer right here. I will see you soon, and in the meanwhile, just keep things simple.